this is a very classical experiment that is done to calculate the friction factor. The friction factor or the friction coefficient is the ratio between the vertical force or the weight of the body and the horizontal force that can cause that body to move. In this case, as you see, we, we designed a, a truck here or a, a vehicle, a double a combination vehicle. We have a, a bucket here, we can put some weights on it, and we have a pulley for the cable to go over it. So when we put weight here, that, that weight is going to pull that vehicle this way. How much weight do you need horizontally to pull how much weight that's vertically? Suppose you have something that has no wheels. You try to compare something that has no wheels like this and you try to push it. What is the ratio between the weight of this body, that's the vertical force, and there's a horizontal force that can pull it on this surface. So the friction coefficient is determined by the, the kind of the surface and the kind of the object on the surface. In this case, we have wheels on the truck. Those wheels are, as you see, there are four wheels and I have a fifth wheel here or an axle. So this thing can go this way. It took me a while to figure out how to to make it, to align it like this, so it simulate a real truck. I put an axle under it. If you look from the bottom here, there is an, an axle under it, so it can twist like this. And trying to get from this concept of friction to this concept of friction, this is a static friction. Static means there are no wheels here. So you have an object. And you try to determine the ratio of the weight of that object and the weight that can pull it in that direction. You divide them, you get the friction coefficient or friction factor. What is the difference between a moving vehicle that has wheels and a vehicle that has no wheels? For example, your shoes has no wheels. So what is the difference? The difference is very simple. Suppose these wheels are reduced smaller and smaller and smaller until you be they become zero. In that case, that kinetic friction will simulate this static friction. You can assume in the static friction you have wheels here in the bottom, but each one has a diameter of zero, which is almost the molecules of the, of the body. So that surface will create a lot of friction because the wheels are the granules of the particle. When you push it this way, it's going to cause a lot of friction. In the kinetic states, this, uh, this is, uh, suppose you have an engine here, we replaced the engine with a cord, to, we apply tension to it, and that cord will simulate the driving force. You need to find out how much driving force, how much pulling you need to pull how much vertical weight that is going down. That is the friction. Why can't this body generate heat? Like the body that has no wheels, it's because you created here a couple or angular momentum. So instead of converting the friction into heat in this case, in this case you're converting the friction into kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, which means you have a force on this axle pushing this way by rotating the wheels. That force is counteracted by, by the friction in the bottom. So you have an action and reaction, Newton third law, so you can move forward. If you have snow here or oil, you will need too little force here. You are not going to be able to stop because you have no friction. And these wheels will turn on themselves because you have no friction if there, is, if there is snow or oil or water. So let us now start with an experiment with the kinetic friction, which means we are going to get rid of the thing that has no wheels.
is to simulate the thing that has wheels. This is a truck. And if you look at the bottom, at the end of the of the table, there is a body and a cord. And this truck has four wheels and an axle in the middle to allow it to go this way. I tried this kind of design, but this design has no axle. This is a wheel and the wheel and wheel. I, two axles in the same body, but it doesn't steer. So this doesn't, is not going to help us. This one will help us a lot because it can steer this way. Look from the top. It has a certain degree of mobility. The wheels are not perfect. Nothing is perfect in life. And we have the weights here. This is the bucket. This is money. We throw, we put them, we take some money and we try to see how much money you need to put in this bucket. And this is the weight. Now, we try to figure out how much you can look from this distance while I'm moving my camera. If I put slow, let us put slowly so that we don't create. Uh, uh, an acceleration. So the friction will start to start rolling. One more is going to to start rolling faster. Look at how much. We need more money. First, determine how much weight it takes to move the whole thing down. It's going. Yes, so this is how much weight it will take to pull it down. Let us repeat the experiment again. We are going to keep this weight here. We are going to take our truck back. Yeah, that is a bucket. The bucket is filled with with coins. Our truck with the bullying cable, and we. If you look at, let us put it in the center of the highway. Look at the lines. See how the 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 forces on each wheel will determine the direction with some degrees of, of mobility. Here is the truck going. It made it all the way to the to the end. Let us now take some money off the bucket to see if we can balance it longer. That might may be enough. And we take our truck back. We try to figure out the ratio between the horizontal force and the weight of the truck without changing any factors against this surface. We took some weight off. Can can it go? I'm holding it. It did go. So we take some money off, we put the money back here, and we take more money. Maybe I take the quarters. Yeah. Let's do it again. Without any pushing, it made it. Let us take some more money. Maybe the the wheels become became looser. I don't think that will move it. That's too little weight. Let us see if I'm right or wrong. I 
I will move my hand, sorry. It, it's stuck here, perfect. So we almost determined it's stuck because of some friction here. But if we put little more money from the carpet to the bucket, we might be able to initiate more acceleration right here. You ask why it didn't go right away because of what you call it the the deformation uh, break. The deformation means once it stopped, it takes a while to start. Once it st uh, it goes, it takes a while to stop. That's the deformation. The deformation of this pulley is the deformation of the of the wheels of the truck. Let me. That's the only thing left now. Can can that stop? About to do it. You say now why it's taking so long or so much money. If you look at here, you can tell the wheels are stuck with an angle. But we need to put more money to overcome the deformation. You can tell there is a deformation right here. Oh boy, this, the, these wheels are deformed badly. Let's do it again. Let's add more. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. That did it. So we leave this amount of money here to start again to see if that was a critical... The difference between the two weights, the first time it started with that same weight is the deformation of the objects that we are using using plastics right here here is my vehicle it is going to go away yeah. perfect okay there is almost a certain range of weight that can make it go we are going to leave this weight here we are going to add more weight to the truck to see Stopped. Might need more weight. We did not change that. That weight. We will put more heavier weight to see if that will make any difference. Because of the rolling, the horizontal forces are not that much. If you don't have wheels, you can tell there, there is going to be a difference. You can put more weight on it. Here, we put something in front of it to see that has no wheels, to see if, that is, if that's going to stop it. It stopped it here, but here where? Here where the bucket went to the floor, because it did not have enough momentum. This is a heavy weight. We are going to put this heavy weight right here. This is a box of cards. Right here. And here are our truck, heavily loaded. Can that initiate the motion? Yeah, it's the same, but it's yeah, stuck here. Perfect. At least here is where everything gets stuck. But call it the deformation weight. This is a loaded truck. I lose it. Completely. Let us add more money to see how much would that take to move it. We are stuck here. The bucket is right here. It's suspended in the middle of the air. Can I? If I put some money here. Truck is stuck because it's too heavy. It needs the wheels are deformed. It need, it needs more form to overcome the inertia. It's 
так. More money. And you can you tell the cord is very stretched because of the weight. We have still a distance from the floor. More money. Because there is a deformation here too. Because the body is already bent. Those are straws, coffee straws on the side. Yes, good. That will do it. We let us let us do it again with this weight to see if can if that will start the motion from the end. Let's take this weight all the way back. I can feel it with my hand. It's heavy. And you look at the cord. This is a stretchable cord. See how stretchable because now it's stretching all the way back. It came all the way to the end of the table. And the, let us go, baby, go. Yeah, because there is a stretch on the cable. This is not a, a solid cable. Uh, this is a, this cable. It's stretchable. It can you can tell. It's used in physical therapy.